Brockton residents, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and I want to welcome you to my new cable show. It's the first show, uh, as my term as mayor, it's called Our Brockton, Our Brockton, and it means working together for a better community, our home. My first guest, it's my honor and privilege to welcome the fire chief, Mike Williams. Chief, how are you? Very well, Mayor. Thank you. Chief, we're coming up to you almost your fifth year anniversary. Correct. May will be five years. Five years. And how many years? 33 total. 33 years. Yes. And, uh, of course, right now we're facing uh, an unprecedented health crisis. Absolutely. Uh, with the COVID-19. COVID-19, coronavirus, um, it's affecting everywhere. It's, it's going to be um, an issue that we're going to be dealing with for quite a while. Well, I'm, I'm happy to say that we have uh, really great men and women on the force. Um, yeah. Recently, we just had 12 graduates. Correct. I want to thank you for your leadership. Um, you know, we have uh, such a great fire department. And, and as mayor, I made a promise we're going to keep adding to that and adding to the police. And... Uh, we need to. Public safety right. is paramount. But right now, Chief, um, because we're in a uh, pandemic, um, mm -hmm. I've declared a national uh, state of emergency, as a local emergency. The governor did a state of emergency. The president did a national emergency. Could you maybe just uh, let the Brockton residents know exactly what you as the chief and specifically the department is doing uh, in, in, in trying to... Uh, to deal with this COVID-19 crisis? Sure, a lot of it's public education, letting the public know what we can do to reduce the spread of this virus. Uh, we do know it's gonna spread, um, but if we can reduce that and limit it as best we can, that's what we're doing, not only for the public, but also for the firefighters on the companies. Um, if everybody's heard PPE these days, personal protective equipment, yes. that's huge. Um, the firefighters protecting themselves when they have access to the, to the public. And I just wanna publicly thank you for your leadership, your friendship, uh, you're a great public servant. And during this crisis, I mean, you've sat in on many, many, many meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, you've offered so much guidance. Um, and, and, and honestly, right now, uh, we don't really know the extent. All we know is that there's loss of life. Um, there's five, as of I taped this, there's five co confirmed cases of mm -hmm. coronavirus in Brockton. And we know it's going to increase, unfortunately. But um, what are some of the mechanisms that the Brockton Fire is doing right now? You have great deputies, you have mm -hmm. great, you have great people on the streets. Right. But what are some of the mechanisms or measures in place that you're working to try to deal with this health crisis? Right. At this point, Mayor, it's all about training and uh, informing the, the, the firefighters on how to uh, don their protective equipment, when and to wear it, um, social distancing, they're calling it. Um, we, we advise that to our firefighters as well. Try not to get too close to someone that you suspect could have the virus. Um, keep your distance, ask a lot of questions. My dispatchers are asking a lot of questions. Um, if somebody makes a call for a medical issue, um, we're trying to get as much information ahead of time as we can. And I think that's extremely important, right? Uh, don't panic. Uh, treat it as a very serious health crisis. It is a crisis. Uh, and practice what the health professionals <coughs> are telling us. Do the social distancing of six feet, not handshaking, um, disinfecting hard surfaces, washing your hands for 20 seconds, at least 20 seconds. Um, as you know, I've declared uh, that all playgrounds in the city of Brockton are, are closed, mm -hmm. not the parks, but the playgrounds. Um, and, you know, I know that business isn't stopping for you. You had a fire just recently, <coughs> a multiple car fire right. uh, up in Ward 1 uh, off, of, off of North Pearl Street. Mm -hmm. um, can you just express to me um, how proud you are of the men and women? I mean, you, you started here <coughs> as just a firefighter. And now you've rose the ranks, rightfully so, to mm -hmm. chief. But... We just graduated 12. Um, there's people that have been working here, you know, maybe not 33 years, but pretty darn close to it. Right. Could you just express to the viewers and to me as the mayor, um, your thoughts on Brockton Fire? Sure, I'm proud of my department every day. <clears throat> I get stopped out in public, um, thanking me and my department for what they do for people. So sometimes it's just the little things, but I'm always glad to hear that. Um, and I, like I said, I'm always proud of the work that the men and women in my department do. And you know, Local 144, which is the, the, the Firefighters Union, not just recognized in, in Massachusetts, but throughout the nation. And we just recently had the 79th uh, anniversary, of course, that, that grave event, the Strand Fire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, next year will be the 80th, and uh, I want to commend you um, because you, you spoke from your heart that day. Um, what does the Strand Fire and, of course, the memorial out here at City Hall, what does that mean to you, Mike, as a Brocktonian and as a firefighter and now as the chief? It, it, it brings up a range of emotions every year. You know, there's sadness there, but there's also a sense of pride in, in us never forgetting what these firefighters went through and their families went through. Um, losing a 13 is one of the largest loss of firefighter lives in our country. Um, and it was up until September 11th. That's right. Um, so it does make me proud to see the turnout of my department show up every year and recognize the 13 firefighters that died. 
You know, it's always great also to see Chief Gallagher and Chief Francis, and mm -hmm. of course the late Chief Burrow, Burrow used to always be here as well. Right. So, you you uh, you know, they say you, you had uh, big shoes to fill. You've 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 really filled it well. It's been a pleasure to to work with you, um, and I look forward to work with you for many many years. And just uh, just know that anything that I could do to help you and your department, Chief, I will. And I just want to publicly thank you right now for dealing with the health crisis, mm -hmm. being a leader in the department, and uh, we'll get through this. We'll get I know. through this. We will. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, Mayor. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Brockton residents, Mayor Robert Sullivan, and I'm joined not just by a great public servant and a registered nurse for over 40 years, uh, a man that served as a ward city councilor, as a councilor at large, and now, uh, after retiring as a department head for the Elections Commission here in Brockton, I asked him during this COVID-19, this serious, serious health crisis, if he would consider stepping up and helping us, and he said, yes, yes, I will. Um, my dear friend uh, and a great, really a great human being, John McGarry. John, how are you? I'm doing well, Mayor. Thank you for uh, inviting me to come and speak no, with you today. Th and thank you, thank you. Um, a lot of people when they retire, they just kind of drift off. You haven't, that's not mm -hmm. in your, your, the way, your makeup, the right. way you thank were brought you. up. And I want to thank you. Um, and, and the Brockton residents, thank you. Um, you know, we don't know, as of we sit here right now, the consequences. Um, some say dire, I concur with that. But the COVID-19, the coronavirus, of course, John, you and I know five confirmed cases as Correct. we film this Correct. in Brockton. Um, you know, you've hit the ground running, as they say, right? You're training from a nurse, um, your people skills as a department head. Could you just let the residents know what the Board of Health is doing? You're the health officer, the main man of the city of Brockton. <laughs> you're on many calls, you're dealing with health professionals, nurses, physician assistants, MDs, um, state officials. Could you just maybe give some information that would be helpful to the residents? Sure. We are still doing a, the job of the Board of Health also. We still are, are doing inspections. Anytime we can go out in, and it's a safe environment for the staff and for the citizenry of the, of the city, the uh, Board of Health will still continue doing the job that they've always done. Um, if your complaints come in, we're still going to, if we can, again, follow up, we're going to. Uh, I obviously have been spending most of my time since I came on board with the COVID-19 issue. Uh, I, I can't stress enough the seriousness of this, and uh, through your actions, Mayor, I, and I appreciate that you, you and I are seeing this on the same page uh, by shutting down parks and by uh, doing other things, calling the state of emergency. Uh, people have to realize that this is a life and death situation. Uh, while you may not get uh, terrible symptoms from this flu if, if you catch it, you can still give it to somebody else and that could be their death uh, mark. Uh, the elderly are extremely susceptible to this. Uh, and now, as we learn more about this disease, we're finding that it is affecting younger people too, uh, not to the extent that it does to the, to the over 60 uh, crowd or people who have uh, other conditions, you know, if you are an asthmatic or if you have heart disease or if you, you know, have a, a multitude of other things that, that, you, that you could be carrying inside of you at the same time and dealing with day to day, this disease just seems to have a knack of really, really attacking those people more. It's, uh, and I would say it's probably from your slightly weakened state or your, your cells and ability to respond to this. It's a brand new infection. None of us have antibodies against it. So we're all fighting it for the first time together. Uh, it's not a time, as you have stated before, this is not a time for kids to be out playing uh, in groups. This is a time for children to be at home with, with their uh, parents. Uh, parents, I ask you to really watch over your children, make sure that they are at home. Uh, they can't be get, shouldn't be having play dates. They should not be out on the ball fields at this time, which is why we, uh, you made the motion, the move to uh, close the playgrounds. Um, if you can get out up to DW or one of the, any other open space and maintain your six feet of, of uh, distance, then certainly go out and enjoy nature, or go out in your yard and enjoy nature. Um, it's just a time for us as a community to come together apart. We, right. need, we, need to, we need to be cognizant of the seriousness of this, but we need to be our brother's keeper also. Absolutely, you hit it. I mean, who would expect in the year 2020 that we'd be dealing with a pandemic? Mm. Um, as we f film this, again, it's Friday, March 20th, um, first uh, Massachusetts loss of life, mm. man over 80. Yesterday, first New England loss of life, a man in, in his 80s in Connecticut. Correct. Um, I, I do want to uh, thank you for your guidance and your wisdom because when I made the declaration to close the playgrounds, of course I conferred with you and your mm -hmm. expertise and uh, I want to let it known that uh, as we film this, John and I also are going to be um, making a declaration in the near future to close 
um, hairdressers, barber shops, um, massage parlors, um, where you get your nails done. Um, we need to do it under an abundance of caution. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, the six foot distancing, that's mm -hmm. a fact. Mm -hmm. The disinfecting, that's a proven fact. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'd like to ask you, John, because again, Board of Health, which is not here at City Hall, it's down the street at the old bank, um, you know, it continues to function. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing as a department head, other than as a leader mm -hmm. um, and dealing with a health crisis? What are you doing? Because again, it's your first week on the job, but are you, do you have full staff? Um, because again, we're monitoring City Hall. We only have one entrance in and out of here down in the basement level. Could you just let the, the viewers know what are you doing at the Board of Health in terms of the team that works for you over there? I am, uh, with the exception of one person who's on vacation who will be back on Monday, I am at what, I have all my staff members that are still working for the city. We had somebody re resign because she has other issues that she's dealing with. Uh, and we do have the uh, one public health nurse. And uh, Mayor, you and I have started early, early discussions about increasing the size of that department yes. in the future. This Brockton is a city of 100,000 people. It certainly needs to have more public health nursing available to it uh, in-house. Uh, the, uh, the, the job itself throughout, uh, throughout the city is, is a big job. Um, we see all sorts of things. Uh, you know, there are many more other infectious diseases in, in the world that we are also have to be, are concerned with at, at the Board of Health that we have to stay on top of. Um, and uh, I think that uh, over time, um, I think we need to see that department grow and um, really do more teaching, get more involved in, with the schools and as far as the, uh, the students and, and what we can uh, teach them so that they can have the, the tools so that they can grow up strong. Um, as far as, as the safety in the building, we have, have closed down and gone to a buzzer system for people to come into, into the Board of Health building. We're uh, meeting people at the door. Uh, the staff is is uh, doing more paperwork right now we, mm -hmm. because we do want to keep them keep them safe so that they can do their job for the citizens of Brockton. Um, we, as I said earlier, we don't want to put them in compromising positions out in the public in large groups and such, just for the same reason we don't want the citizens of the city to be in large Absolutely. groups. Absolutely. So uh, I think over over time, I, I can see that department uh, playing a much larger role in the health of the city of Brockton. And I agree with that. And I do want to publicly thank Superintendent of the Schools, Mike Thomas. Absolutely. Uh, Mike's not just a, a great leader for the schools, but he's a good friend. But he, when we asked, he, he answered the call. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is we needed some more um, healthcare professionals, nurses to work with you right mm -hmm. now. And uh, Brockton Public School nurses are assisting this yeah. endeavor. It's all hands on deck. It is. We roll up the sleeves. We it work is. together. We think worst case scenario to get the best case scenario. Um, we treat it serious. Um, and, and again, I just want to thank you, John. Um, I, I didn't imagine that we'd have to deal with this, but we're dealing with it. And, and mm -hmm. I said this last week, I couldn't think of a better person. I mean that, I wouldn't think of a better person that could lead during this terrible time. Um, and I just wanted to thank you. And is there anything that you'd like to offer concluding? You know, I would again, I really can't stress enough the importance of social distancing in this and, and maintaining the, the severity of what we're going through right now. It's, and parents, please talk to your children and let them know that this is something we're going through together. Um, you know, you, you've got your job to do, I, we've got our jobs to do, and we're, we're going to be here to do our jobs for you. Um, and as far as I go, it was an honor to be approached by the mayor to ask me to, to give him a hand uh, through this very trying time. Um, there's few people that, that care more about this city. So, you know, it's an honor to be here to serve the citizens of Brockton. Thank you, John. We'll get through this time. Yes, we will. And uh, again, thank you very much for your efforts. And um, that's John McGarry, who uh, is the health officer for the city of Brockton. Thanks again, John. Thank you, ma'am. Brockton residents, Mayor Robert Sullivan, and it's my honor and privilege to have the Brockton Police Chief, Manny Gomes, here. Um, uh, Chief, thank you for being here. I really appreciate everything that you're doing leading the department during this COVID-19. Um, you've been on the job over 34 years, Manny? Yes, sir. And uh, I will say I was very proud to appoint you. Technically, you're the interim, you're the acting police chief. I've uh, done an awesome job since you've taken that role. Of course, this is uh, uh, second go around. I know Mayor Belzotti were there, but could you just, uh, Chief, could you just talk to me what what the department is doing from the patrolman all the way up to the brass right now, because we're doing <clears throat> a health crisis that no one ever forecasted in the year 2020. What's Brockton PD doing right now to deal with coronavirus? 
Well, if you can understand, of course, it's a uh, all hands on deck situation. Um, the shifts are fully manned. Uh, we've moved people around for that. Um, we are in a process of trying to maintain all the services that we maintained before. We are presently still a full service police department. Prior to this crisis, we were already handling 2,000 calls for service a week. Wow. And we, uh, we've remained vigilant. Th those calls still keep coming in. Yeah, they do. And the officers are still handling them. There's uh, things still going on like motor vehicle accidents and things of that nature. Yep. Um, but we have tried to prepare our offices uh, with contingent plans. Uh, depending on how bad this crisis takes us, <clears throat> and we have some contingency plans at different levels of where we go from here to continue to provide the best service to, that we can for our residents. Key thing is to keep my officers safe, and uh, if, if they don't keep themselves safe, they won't be able to help anyone. That's right. So we're working very close with uh, all uh, Brockton agencies, mainly with the fire department. We've had some uh, interactive training um, and right now, uh, I'm happy to say that we're staying a full service police department. And if people call the Brockton police officer, we are responding and taking care of whatever their needs are. Fantastic. And I've said this, I mean, we're just really privileged as a city to have the brave men and women on the Brockton PD. Uh, really, they put their lives on the line to protect and serve. Um, you as the, he's the chief that I designated when I came in, um, you've done some really creative things that hadn't existed before. You've appointed two liaisons to the Brockton City Council. You've appeared uh, at the NAACP Brockton chapter to answer tough questions, you know, appropriate questions. Um, you're taking calls, you're giving out your cell phone. Manny, why do you do that? Well, it, it, it comes with a job, and that's what the job is all about. And uh, I found that some paths of communication were a little hindered in the city at, at times. Um, and we were trying to open that up, uh, some clear dialogue, and quite frankly, some transparency on both sides, because um, without that, there won't be any trust. I agree, and, and I've said this, it doesn't matter if you're the mayor or the police chief, we're in the people business, yes. right? The people pay our bills, right? Correct. We get our salary from the constituents, the residents. Are you glad you came back for round two being police chief? I, I, I do, I, I love this job, and I, I love the men and women of the Brockton Police Department. I couldn't be prouder of them and to be one of them. And, uh, and, that, and that's why you're a good leader. And, and it starts at the top and it works its way down. And uh, you know, recently uh, a historic event happened in Brockton Police. Could you tell the viewers what happened? The, uh, the event that happened uh, only last week is uh, our officers uh, came across a, uh, a, 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 a sudden death case situation. And upon their investigation, they found that uh, Mr. Marshall uh, had no uh, Next of Ken, mm -hmm. we worked really hard and through all military records to um, find someone and sadly we didn't. And we found that he was a World War II vet mm -hmm. and it really struck home with the officers in the Brockton Police Department. And um, I have to give credit to a couple officers, uh, uh, but namely uh, Sergeant uh, Robert Toledo, who spearheaded this. And uh, subsequently, we planned on uh, having a funeral for Mr. Marshall because we didn't believe that any, any, any veteran should be buried alone. Um, and it really took off. It showed, it showed what this community is all about. Oh, yeah. We started, um, we received a, an awful lot from within the department, from other departments in the city. The fire department came out. We had outside agencies come. We had different vet groups. Uh, I even had people call in my office mm. uh, trying to donate money for the funeral services. It was a tremendous showing and a tremendous amount of honor and respect for uh, a gentleman who, um, as I said before, uh, earned it. So Mr. Marshall, of course, the greatest generation, uh, was a retired postal worker from down south. Um, I do want to thank Sergeant Delito and Detective Jim Crenshaw. Yes. Um, there's a lot of uh, 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 former military that serve police and fire. <clears throat> But I was proud to be the mayor when I went to that funeral home and I saw the men and women from Brockton PD there out of respect, fitting tribute. Um, and then he was brought to his final resting place down at the National Cemetery down in Bourne. I just thought it'd be extremely important, Manny, to, to talk about that because it was a great day. Sad that he passed, but a really fitting tribute to a hero. Um, and then there was also recently a promotion of, uh, of a woman in Brockton that's historic. Could you, do you mind? Sharing that as well. Yes, um, first time in the history of the Brockton Police Department, 
we promoted a uh, female officer uh, to the rank of lieutenant. She was, she was a sergeant. Uh, sergeant Brenda Perez was, uh, was, was made a lieutenant through yeah. the city council. Um, and it's the first time in the history of this department. And, um, and, I, and I must say, she's, she's extraordinary uh, and deserves it. Absolutely, without question. Uh, she's just a, a great example of a police officer, male or female. The fact that um, she's the first lieutenant is, lieutenant is historic, uh, but it'll be the first of many, I suspect, over the years. Right. And I want to thank the city council, and I want to thank you for your recommendation as well. Um, you're recognizing as chief um, that good workers deserve to be recognized. I was proud to sign that order, and when she was sworn, it was a good day for Brockton. But rest assured, we have so many great people that serve and protect Brockton. I just want to, first of all, thank you as the chief for your leadership, for your friendship, for your 34 years of service to the city of Brockton. And uh, we're going to see uh, a lot of you over, over uh, the term while I'm mayor. Thank you so much, Chief Gomes. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for watching uh, Our Brockton. It was the first showing of many showings. Uh, and I hope you liked it. It was very informative. I want to thank Chief Williams. Chief Gomes, I want to thank John McGeary. Um, we're going to have a lot more information to share over the coming weeks. I'm asking you during this health crisis, please be safe. Please follow the guidelines. And also, um, please follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, um, City of Brockton. Uh, and, and if you have any questions or concerns, please go on to the city website or contact the mayor's office. Again, thank you for watching it. I'll see you at the next show. This is Robert Sullivan. Be safe, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.